What's up, Cow Gang? All right, so we got this problem here. I kind of like this problem, actually. So what do we got? We got a clay ball, and we're throwing this clay ball at a block of wood who's sitting on the end of a table. And basically, they're gonna fly off the table together and fall 2.2 meters, and you're trying to find how far they go. So there's a lot that you have to consider in this question. Uh, so basically, let's get started, right? So what's gonna happen? There's gonna be uh, you know, conservation of momentum, right? Momentum is the, the name of the game of this problem. So what does momentum say? Well, you know that your momentum, your total momentum at the beginning of the system is gonna be equal to the total momentum at the end of your system, basically. So before these two interact, they're gonna have this certain amount of momentum, and then after they interact, they're gonna have the same amount of momentum, just mathematically described differently. So how does that mathematically describe? Well, it's gonna be mass initial, velocity initial, is equal to mass final, velocity final, right? So what do we got here? Well, we have a lot of things happening. We have two systems that turn into one system. So that means on our left side, our initial is gonna have two systems and our final is gonna have one system. So what do we have? So this is gonna be equal to mass of the clay times the velocity of the clay plus mass of the block times the velocity of the block. And that's gonna be equal to the mass of both of them combined. So I'm actually gonna rewrite this as a different way. This is gonna be mass of block plus mass of clay times the velocity final. So we're trying to solve for that velocity final, right? Let's do it. So if we're trying to find velocity final, uh, let's go ahead and divide that. So it's gonna be uh, basically mass clay velocity of clay plus mass of block velocity of block over mass of block plus mass of clay. And that's equal to velocity final. So we have all this stuff, right? Let's go ahead and uh, plug it in. So mass of the clay is 0.5. Uh, kilograms times 24 meters a second and then mass of the block is 8 kilograms but it's not moving so it's actually zero which means that this gets cancelled out so you don't even have to worry about that so then it's going to be mass of the clay 0.5 plus mass of the block or that's 8 equal to velocity final and if you plug this in you get that it, it goes 1.41 right 1.41 meters a second so that's its velocity basically it's uh, you know it's velocity tangential to the ground, so this is 1.41 meters a second. We figured that out, nice job. That's not the end of the problem though, right? We have to find out how far it goes in that distance. So there's probably multiple ways you can do this. Uh, the way I'm most comfortable with is free fall. You find how long it takes to fall and then you find how long it goes in that much time, right? So let's do it. All right, so. Okay, so free fall, right? We have free fall. So let's say y, right? Y, let's use our kinematics equations. That's gonna be gravity divided by two times time squared plus velocity initial in the y direction times time plus uh, height initial. So we're trying to find when y is equal to zero. So we're gonna say zero is equal to, uh, gravity is negative 4.905. So gravity is negative 9.81, but then it's divided by two. So this is this squared. So its initial velocity in the y direction is going to be zero, right? It's just uh, it's stopped there, and then plus y naught. So y naught is uh, 2.2 meters. So of course you subtract it over, and the negatives cancel. So it's going to be 2.2 divided by 4.905 is equal to t squared. But if you take the square root of it, you'll just get t is equal to that. And this is going to take 0 0.67 seconds. So that means that it takes 0 0.67 seconds to fall to the ground. And we're trying to find how far it moves in that much time. So of course we know that velocity is equal to change in position over change in time. So we're trying to find change in position. We know change of time and we know it's velocity. So just to move it over, we're going to get velocity times change in time is equal to change in x. So that means that delta x is going to be its velocity, 1.41 times its change in time, 0.67. And you multiply these together to get 0.94 meters. That's how far it goes. That's a four, 9.4 meters, 0.94 meters. And there you go, that's your answer. So yeah, conservation of momentum, not that bad. Uh, what are they doing over there? I'm just joking. Yeah, so good luck on your physics homework, guys. Uh, stick around if you have some problems with this. I have a lot of uh, videos covering these topics. And uh, feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one, so peace.